That's a Daniel Boone cap right oh, there. Buddy. If I ever saw it's a one. handsome hat. It is. I had it on the other night, and my wife was giving me the old wink wink as soon as I put that hat <laughs> on. So don't expect the same results here in Let's the see. Uh, ice shanty. Minnesota is the land of 10,000 lakes, frozen lakes from what I can tell. It's also home to the largest ice fishing population in the nation. I'm Giannis Patelis, and I'm here to explore another darker side of the sport for the very first time. It's January 3rd, and while Steven Ranella is probably off spearfishing in Mexico, I'm ringing in the new year in one of the best possible places a hard water angler might find themselves. That is, if you're obsessed with dark house spearing for whitefish and pike, like my Looks buddy like Mark Moore. pretty good deer hunting around here. Mark is an avid angler, hunter, forager, and wild foods fanatic. His company, Modern Carnivore, focuses on reconnecting people to their food and introducing them to a direct harvest lifestyle which, with the right tools and a little bit of knowledge, can be done year-round, putting meat in the freezer even in the coldest and darkest months. I like to think of myself as a pretty well-versed angler. I've tied hundreds of flies, guided fishing for years, and fished coastal waters from North Carolina to Alaska. But there is one type of fishing I haven't done. That's good enough. I just want to look down and see what we've got. Dark house spearing or as the locals call it. You don't call it spear fishing though, you call it just spearing. Yeah, I just usually call it spearing. So what do you see down there? Nothing, that's the problem, it's so cloudy. Maybe you have better eyes than I do. No, looks like dark water. While yeah. we're prospecting for a good spot, Mark realizes there's something else we need. Maybe for roasting hot dogs, I don't know. Roasting hot dogs definitely wasn't on tonight's menu but I trust this native Minnesotan knows what he's doing. This will be one of our most important tools of the day. This lake is around 140 feet deep, making it ideal habitat for one of today's target species, the lake whitefish. While these fish spend most of their time in very deep water, each fall and early winter they migrate into the shallows to spawn, and this provides a short window of opportunity for those who know Ooh, how to throw a spear. Going. Ooh, 12? That's from the surface in the water. Okay. I'm gonna drop this down and see if it's You don't trust the technology. Mark double checks the measurements with a traditional depth finding weight, a once indispensable tool for every angler venturing blind onto a wide expanse of ice. We know it's pretty clear. Let's do it. Now that we've chosen a location with the proper depth and water clarity, Mark shows me how to cut a perfectly sized hole. What we're going to do is we're going to punch six holes, which will be the four corners and then one on each side of the, of the long end. And then we're going to use a handsaw to cut in between those. You get a character in a video Exactly. Game. Fight ice monsters. <laughs> Sawing out our spearing hole may have made me momentarily warm. But I know, in classic Midwestern fashion, that this isn't going to last for long. So just watch that hole. Predating angling, ice spearing is known to be one of the oldest forms of fishing. Native American tribes speared fish through the ice long before the arrival of Europeans. And while the exact origin of ice spearing is unknown, there is no question of its historical ties and cultural significance to the Great Lakes area. Ice spearing, it seems, is as much of a tradition as it is a sport. I've been looking at that thing all morning, <laughs> wondering what's, what bag of tricks is it. This was my dad's, okay, with all the old decoys in it. Spear fishing, ice spear fishing, is sort of the poor man's sport originally. It, it really became popular in like the 1920s, 30s. It was around the time of, of depression, and a lot of people say just popularity grew because people needed subsistence right. fishing. And so it was the poor man's sport because you could make everything. Like these decoys are all handmade. There are old decoys from the 20s and 30s that have sold at auction for like tens of thousands of dollars. Well, these are all the, all the decoys from my dad. 
While some of his decoys are elaborate and true pieces of art, others are simple and surprising. Here's our, our secret weapon right here. A go a golf ball decoy. <laughs> golf ball decoy. Uh, I hear there's a lot of golf courses in Minnesota. <laughs> there there so. are a lot of golf courses here. So this one here, um, whitefish are attracted to anything white. So the thing is, is when whitefish come in now, I've never seen them come up to come up to a decoy and sit there. You will see that with a pike. Pike will sometimes come in and they'll hit that. But for the whitefish, they're generally just moving. They're going to keep moving through. So that's why we have to be ready. And, it, and as soon as we see them coming through, we're going to have to throw the spear. Got it. Unlike the traditional rod, reel, and lure setup, spearing decoys usually don't have hooks. And jigging sticks are often much shorter and generally don't have reels. Instead, lightly jerking on the jigging stick sends the decoy swimming in a tight circle, which will hopefully catch the eye of a pike or a whitey lurking nearby. And that's when this multi-tined spear comes into play. This is my favorite spear. It was my dad's. So your dad was a spear. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been spearing out here on, on this water since since I was a kid, a young kid. I got my first uh, pike when I was probably seven, eight years, eight years old, probably using this spear. This one actually was made, I'm sure, at the Burlington Northern Shops in Brainerd, which was really how this whole area came into being. And with all the scrap material, they sure. make these spears. So again, easy, to, easy and, and inexpensive to start. The other key is length. I like the length of this spear. It's probably about six feet. And because what that allows you to do is you can you can carefully put it on this far edge. Yep. Rest it on your shoulder. Ah, and you're always ready. You're always ready. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna get that spear down right behind the ears, as we like to say, right behind the gills. And then it's it's a pretty heavy spear, so you don't need to throw real hard, but just give it But you do have to throw a little bit. Yeah, give it a little bit, give it a little I was imagining that I would hold with one hand and then push with the other. You could, but you're just one hand and just yeah. Straight I down. mean, you could try that if you've got enough time to do that and get on with two, with two hands. I mean, you that, okay. that could be a method. So it's a, to, it's a timing thing. It happens yeah, quick. It happens quick. It, okay. It's going to happen quick. While I find all the history and methodology behind spearing fascinating, I'm ready for some action. However, there is one critical step we still need to discuss fish identification. Spearing is a type of sight fishing, and unlike regular angling where you can throw a fish back, this sport is played for keeps. So if a fish comes in, hold a moment, and we want to make sure we ID it properly. Right, because the, there's some fish that we can't spear. Absolutely. Don't want to be spearing any, any, of, the, any of the main sport species, crappie, uh, perch, walleye, um, bass, etc. And so we're going to be looking for the nose of that fish, a little bit more pointed on, on the white fish. Right. Her mouth is subterminal, so it's it's low. Uh, look for fork tail, look for the silvery scales on the side. The pike's pretty easy. I mean, you got spots yeah. on it, big flat round nose. Yep. No muskies in the, in this lake. Um, so yeah, when a pike comes in, it's 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 pretty easy to ID especially if it comes in hot and just attacks that decoy. <laughs> With spearing lax in terms of gear, it inversely requires impatience. If we had a little jigging rod right now, oh, I got it. we'd be hammering perch. All this waiting around with minimal action reminds me of sitting in a tree stand. And I start to wonder if all this staring into the abyss is gonna be worth it. Mark seems to think it will be, and I'll take his word for it. So the reason we put the hole here is we're right at about eight feet, as you can see, and we're right in an area where the whitefish are gonna be cruising through. Mm -hmm. At this time of year, it's this small window time where they are uh, spawning and, and, and just post-spawn. Now, will they even go shallower to you? Oh, 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 pike. Get up on them there. Miss. Miss. Damn, so close. Oh, I hate to let one <laughs> swim away. Yeah. I think I threw, pushed too much and maybe it planed it. Well, it, that and then also out at that angle, that's where like we were talking about that oh, light refraction. refraction it's, it's tough. 
But yeah, that must have gone right in front of his nose. It did. I, it did. I was watch. I was watching back here, and I could see it just went went right out. While the miss is disappointing, it's nice to know there's life down there. Oh, I can't believe I let one slide. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Just like any type of hunting. Should have practiced more. <laughs> You were going to the to the spearing range last week, getting getting your arm ready, right? It's hard to be quick and uh, stealthy moving that spear. Mm -hmm. Oh, I saw something swimming in the camera. Hey, coming in. There you go. There you go. Nice little guy. Yeah, get down there, right? Oh, 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 yeah. I'm still on him. You I can see him. him. Okay, hold on. Let's see. You can see his tail. Yeah. So just, just slowly bring just him slowly up. Slowly bring him up. You'll try to gap him. Yeah. Good job! Hey, all right. Oh, you got you got him pretty pretty good there. That counts as a good hit. Yeah, we'll take it. Absolutely. Look at that guy. That's a nice pike. So let's uh, measure him up. See where we're at. Look at that. 26 and a half. Over 26. Just over one over 26. Yeah, man. Trying something new like this, I can't say I had much in the way of expectations. But there is something certainly primal about spearing. The focus, the complete lack of outside stimuli, and a connection to one of humankind's earliest weapons. Man, you feel like you're in an alien environment when you come out here after you've been in there in the darkness for a couple hours. For one thing, the combination of the darkness and the large rectangular spearing hole creates a feeling of complete immersion. It's almost like hovering over a giant, ever-changing aquarium, with one obvious exception. The spear resting on my shoulder is a hefty reminder that these fish are anything but pets. Some people will say, that there was an unfair advantage. You didn't have to, the fish did not have to take the bait. Mm. But there's actually a study that was done that, that shows that uh, you gotta put a lot more hours in to get a, get a fish spearing than you do angling. Oh, I believe it, man. We're fishing, how big is this lake? Oh, this lake is thousands of acres. I mean, the whole thing, the whole chain. Right, and we're fishing like uh, maybe 10 square feet of it. <laughs> right, how oh, about? Three feet by, by two feet here, yeah, pretty small. Controversy aside, I'm eager to see this golf ball go to work. And I'm really eager to get my hands on the lesser targeted of the two species that we're here for, the lake white fish. Right? Could have been, yeah, it could have been reflection. That's a white fish, white fish, white fish. Yes, yes, yes. Yes! Oh, nice. Oh yeah, he's got two. Uh, <laughs> you got two on him. That's great. That is a perfect size. That's a thick one. He's got that adipose fin there. And he's starting to get really tall again. Sort of almost that humpy, yeah, humpy sure. type of shape. And you got a perfect throw. That's a really good throw. Like a pro, you've been doing it forever. With success on my side, it's time to shake things up. I'm gonna test my abilities with the jigging stick. Who knows? Maybe I can even bring a little beginner's luck. Um, are you a righty? I am. So should we switch spots yeah, then so yeah. you're right in the middle with your throwing hand? Yep, that sounds good. Let's okay. do that. <laughs> right. Perfect size too, huh? Yeah. Didn't have to wonder if he was too big. No, no, exactly. I'm wrapping up my decoy. 
now that I've proven that I can decoy him in. I, I felt his teeth on it for a split second. Did you? Yeah. Oh, that's perfect shooting. Well, one more. Nice shot, man. Good, good first day. Oh man, fantastic. That's a uh, nice little haul. And it's funny, I don't know. I mean, even angling, I'd say three fish is a good haul, but I think that little jolt of excitement that you get from like, you get to be a predator just for a moment and then, you know, throw something like that. You don't get that same feeling. No, exactly. It's, this is much more like hunting fish. Than, yeah. than fishing. As we pack up, Mark finally circles back to those sticks he cut this morning and why we hauled them out here. So this is how you leave a hole. We're done. Yeah, I said earlier that uh, the stick's important. You want you want to put a marker. Mark it for snowmobilers, cross-country skiers, hikers. Just make sure they don't fall into it accidentally. You feel like that hat gave you some luck today? I do, absolutely. Three fish. Pretty good. You speared them nice. You speared them really well. Yeah, good teacher. Cool, let's haul out and Sounds good. get some rest, huh? Sounds great. Our spearing hole properly marked and three good sized fish in our bucket. We make our way back to shore, sleds in tow, both of us daydreaming about fish recipes while a heavy Midwestern sky blankets the horizon. Mark's buddy, Lucas Leaf, is a former chef and currently works for an organization called Sportsman for the Boundary Waters. So, I trust he knows a thing or two when it comes to taking your catch from the shanty to the kitchen. He's offered to show us a couple of non-traditional preparations for whitefish and pike. One is a tried and true fish cake, the other a fried fish batter. He makes the initial preparations for the fish cakes at home, mixing and shaping the ingredients, and then finishes both recipes out on the ice. While he works magic with grilled lemons and bacon fat, Mark and I do a whole lot of, well, not catching any. Yanni, Mark, how's it going over here? Hey, Lucas. Slow bite, dude. Slow bite. Cheers to your first uh, whitefish, yeah, Yanni. Thanks. thanks, Lucas. That's a good way to look at my whitefish. Mm. Really good. Excellent. You can taste the sourdough of the breadcrumbs. I love that. Next, he whips up the fried pike using a homespun version of a certain classic Minnesotan frying staple. Which fish is this? So this is the part of the big pike that you guys speared yesterday. Giannis got that one. Dig in. I drill oh. a hole for you, but I don't think it's worthwhile for you to fish here right now. It's delicious. It is very good. Now, would most ice fishermen um, eat pike or let them go? I mean, it's during the winter for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's such a good eating fish. I mean, look at that. It's just a great flaky white flesh, mm -hmm. and it's as good as anything out there. I'm definitely choosing white fish over the pike. Over the pike? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's different. I mean, I love them both, but mm -hmm. so delicate. A lot of people mm -hmm. don't think of frying white fish. I think of just smoked whitefish. Those people only say that is because that information has been handed down over time. They've never had a smoke or a fried whitefish, you know? Exactly. Well, thanks for showing me how to spear one, man. That was super fun. Very educational. It was a lot of fun. I mean, uh, you know how to throw a spear, man. It must be from a previous life because I haven't done much spear chucking. Thanks for cooking, Lucas. Yeah, you're welcome. Probably be a long time until I get fed like this on the ice again. Cheers. Cheers. Even though I might have to order myself a larger set of bibs with all the great food around here, we're not done exploring this frozen landscape. On the next episode, I get a bit more practice with a spear and a taste of some fish that truly are the dinosaurs of fresh water. <laughs>